In the year 1875, bank robbery was the most profitable of crimes, and it attracted the elite among Western criminals. They ranked themselves with Quantrell, the James Boys, and the Youngers. A few of them were just as shrewd and deadly as Cole Younger or Jesse James. Bonnie says the leg don't feel so good. Want me to ride into Wichita and get you a doctor? No, sit down. All right. I'm not trailing with you any longer. Bonnie and I are going into Wichita alone. Okay, Clem, if that's the way you want it. But aren't you taking a big risk? Is that any concern of yours? Yes, it is, in a way. What way? You're the last of the Parkers, Clem. I was hoping that after your leg got well that you'd let me and the boys throw in with you. With you to do the brain work, we could take a bank every week. And those banks in Kansas haven't had a real Ralston since... You're a fool! I wouldn't have you or any one of your mob on a bank job. Now, look here, Clem. Shut up. Bonnie, give him a couple of hundred dollars for services rendered. That's too much, Clem. Do as I tell you. I don't want to see you or any one of your mob in Wichita. Head south and go back to robbing stages. I'm clean in this state. You're not. Now ride out of here and keep riding. All right, Clem. If you say so. Give him the money, buddy. That's the end of it. Goodbye. Yes, sir. Oh, there you are. Pete said you wanted to see me in a hurry. You call a half hour in a hurry? You coming down with cholera morbus? You're just getting conceited and lazy. Well, 20 minutes is not a half hour. Huh? Anyway, what's the big rush? You see the picture in the Kansas City Star? Clem Parker. That's right, he's a patient of mine. He was brought to me by his lady friend. Mr. and Mrs. Tom Whiting, they call themselves now. Dressed up like city folks. Clem Parker here in town? I never let on that I recognized him. He had a right pretty woman with him, though. Her flesh was well and neatly laid on her bones, and... All right, all right. Now, why would Parker come here to see you? Gunshot wound his left leg. A silly jackass who pulled the bullet out and missed all the bone splinters. I wonder what he wanted in Wichita. Huh? He's a bank robber. And we got two banks. I'd better go and draw my money out. Will you wait a minute? Huh? Where'd he say he was staying? Wichita Hotel. And I gave him strict orders to go to bed and stay there. Thanks, Doc. You might have done me a real favor. What? Favor? Why, Doc? I want every penny of that reward. Well, there's no reward. Parker isn't wanted in this state. Well, your reward is the tender feeling of the good doctor, the sublime knowledge that you can heal a suffering fellow man. Oh. Uh, you're not fooling anybody, Doc. The only scalp money you ever took was a fee for curing dandruff. Dandruff? That's right. Parker. Using the name of Whiting now, huh? Yes, but you better be careful, son. He might have a gang just outside of town. Yeah, that's my hunch, too. Thanks, Doc. Sir, are you Marshal Wyatt Earp? That's right, ma'am. I'm Mrs. Whiting, Mrs. Tom Whiting. Uh, Doc Fabrique described you pretty well. Oh, he told you about my husband's accident? Well, it's just routine, ma'am. He has to report on all gunshot wounds. I see. I uh, 
hate to disturb your husband, but I kind of got to ask him a couple of questions. Well, he's asleep right now. Couldn't I answer the questions? Oh, I'm afraid not, ma'am. Well, it's nothing that important. I'll just drop back a little later. Oh, no, you shouldn't have to make two trips. I'll go up with you if that's all right. Certainly. It's me, dear. Are you awake? Tom. Yeah, I'm awake. Marshal Herb is with me. He just wants to ask you a few questions, Tom. Okay. How are you, Marshal? I'm just fine, Mr. Parker. Clem! You're mighty fast with that, mister. Sit down, Mrs. Parker. Now, I'd like to talk to both of you, and I'd like to make it real friendly. Friendly? Well, you're not wanted in this town, Mr. Parker. Dr. Brig tells me you need a rest. You mean you won't bother us? There's just one question. Any of your crowd hanging around Wichita? No. That's the truth, Mr. Herb. All right. You stay here as long as you need to. I hope your leg doesn't give you too much trouble. Let's get a good doctor. Wait a minute. You're a new kind of John Law. Or didn't you know I was wanted in Missouri? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Parker, this is uh, Wichita, Kansas, and I got just about all the trouble I can handle right here. There's reward money. Well, just to make your rest easy, I'm not interested in the scalp money. If the sheriff from Missouri or the United States Marshal shows up with a warrant, I have to help him make the arrest, but otherwise, rest easy. That's mighty decent of you, Mr. Rupp. Not at all. You play things square with me, and we'll get along fine. Mr. Herb! Mr. Herb! Yeah? I'm from the Union Bank. Mr. Kenton sent me over. There's a suspicious character hanging around. I'll be right over. Yes, Mr. Herb. Excuse me. Top Anders? There's only one sure way to find out. I'll go right over there. Oh, that slimy doormat thief. Just when we had things fixed real decent with Mr. Earp. Now he thinks we lied to him. I better take a gun. No. Just make sure it's tarp. I can get him drawn from a handbag. I don't lose your temper. There's easier ways to skin that cat. Well, you better keep this bandage wet. I'll be right back. a stranger in town? Yeah. Any crime in that? Oh, well, might be. The bank doesn't like strangers hanging around. Okay, Marshal, I'm moving. Wait a minute. What's your name? John Smith. You got anything on you to prove it? No. Don't believe I have. You look a little bit like Todd Banders. You ever known? No. No, don't believe I have. You? No. I saw his picture once on a wanted post. Where's your horse, mister? Over there. You want to meet him, too? Yeah. Buckshot dusted, huh? Take off the saddle roll, Mr. Smith. Take it off yourself. I told you to take off the saddle roll. Now put it on the ground and open it up.
Give me that. A map of Wichita. That don't prove anything. What do you need a map like that for? You afraid you get lost? Yeah. Well, you haven't done anything I can hold you for, Mr. Smith. You seen Clem Parker lately? Clem? I don't know any Clem Parker. I know a Clint Barker. You surprised me. Why? I didn't think Parker would let a stupid fool like you case a bank. Tell you what I'm going to do, Mr. Smith. I'm going to give a description of you to all my deputies. Next time you're seen around town, you're going to get hurt. And by next time, I mean any time after five minutes from now. I was hoping Earp would take him from seeing him on the poster. But he didn't. Marshal just ordered him out of town. I think we ought to turn Anders and his crowd in. Show her up there, Camp? Sure. No, that's going too easy on Tarp. I ordered him to stay out of Wichita, remember? Now I think we'll encourage Tarp to go against that bank. Then tell Herb. He'll blast him into little pieces. Yes, but will the Marshal believe us? You'll be a fool if he doesn't. When Tarp hits a bank, he shoots at everybody in sight. But what if Herb won't believe us? He's been decent to us, Clem. I don't want him hurt. Who are you for, Herb, or me? Oh, don't talk foolish, Well, I ain't Clem. able to stand on two good feet and give Tarp what's coming to him. Herb and his deputies can do it for me. You make Herb believe us. That's your job. All right, Clem. But if he doesn't and gets himself killed, who's to blame? Either way, Tarp Anders will ride into a lot of bullets from somebody. This is my last job, Bunny. What? Yep. My last job. When I get well, we'll get married and settle down. But we can't have Tarp cashing in on my name, calling himself and those cheap hoodlums of Parkers. Now you see why Earp has to wind him up for us, don't you? Deputy said you wanted to see me. Oh, out here, please. Not inside. I don't like jails. All right. Hold that. Uh, what's on your mind? I followed you. Saw that man in front of the Union Bank. Oh. Well, I don't suppose you could recognize him. Yes. He's Tarp Anders. He tags along after Clem. We thought we got rid of him, Mr. Herb. You're not friendly with him now, huh? Never were. He's a cheap stagecoach bandit. Every time Top's gone against a bank, he's made a bloody mess of things. You don't believe me, do you? It isn't too logical, Mrs. Parker. Oh, I told Clem you wouldn't. But you must try to believe me. Top's going to rob one of your banks. Maybe tomorrow. Which one, the Union or the Kansas State? We, uh, we only got two. I don't know, but I'll find out. And then you'll tell me? I'll try. I'll let you know tonight sometime. Mrs. Parker, why would you tell me? Because Clem's quitting the business. We're going to California as soon as he's well enough. Please try and think of it our way. We'll never have a chance to make a decent life for ourselves with, with Tarp Anders robbing banks and calling his crowd the Parker gang. Well, isn't that logical? What would we have to gain by lying to you? Mrs. Parker, I don't know. I'm not Mrs. Parker. Not yet. My name's Bonnie Dawson. Now, isn't that proof I'm being honest with you? Well, maybe you are. But it just so happens that I'm Marshal of Wichita. Yes, and we've been bank robbers. Well, let's leave it this way. You find out what you can about Mr. Anders and meet me at Dr. Brake's office tonight. Around 10 o'clock? That'd be fine. You still don't believe me, do you? But you better make up your mind to, because not believing me could cost you a few lives. Maybe your own.
Russian music is just a lot of gab gab, Torp. You know, the truth is, you're scared to take that bank. You're afraid of Wyatt Earp. That ain't the hitch, Dan. Well, what is the hitch, then? It's Clem and Bonnie Parker. Oh, Clem's laid up with a bad leg. And what can Bonnie do? She can handle a gun. And so can Clem if he takes a notion to spoil the party. What do you boys think? You think it's smart? Yeah, let's get... Yeah. I'm not going to hurt you, and Clem's back in Wichita. We changed our minds, Tarp. We want in on the bank job. What bank job? Don't play dummy with me. You were in town this morning. You cased the Union Bank. Clem was real sore when he heard about it. Then we got to thinking. You come into town by yourselves and you'll get hurt. Use Clem's plan and you'll get rich. How about it, Tarp? Clem knows how to really take a bank. I say we deal. Okay, Bonnie. You've got something to offer, you're in. Clem drew a diagram. Wrote it all down. Oh. There's the Kansas Bank. Union Bank. Hmm. And that's the setup. Almost the same plan the Parkers used to take the bank at Mexico, Missouri. It's what Clem calls the covey of quail idea. You drift into town one by one just before daylight. Then you bunch up at 9 o'clock when the bank opens. You grab the money and then scatter in these six different directions. Understand? Yeah, but why do we hit the Union Bank? Because Earp knows you cased it. He figures you'll take the other bank, the Kansas State. She's right, Tarp. No John Law would expect us to go against the Union Bank. He'll be watching the other bank. Yeah, outsmarting himself. Okay, Bonnie. We'll hit the Union Bank at five after nine in the morning. I'll meet you here about noon for our share of the hall. Now study that. Any bank job plan that Clem Parker draws is worth 5,000 cash before the vault doors are open. Hmm. So, Earp will be watching the Kansas State. Clear around the corner from our mark. Are you still as good with a rifle as you brag? Well, money says I can outshoot any of you. And I'll make just one change in Clem's plans. We'll put a crack shot right on the roof of this building here. He'll take care of Wyatt Earp before we hit the Union Bank. You think you can do that? I reckon so, Tarp. You want me to wing him or... Uh... Aim here. Well, the logic is against her. I mean, logically speaking, she and Clem are the, the brains behind the whole thing, and I'd, I'd just be an idiot to trust her, wouldn't I? Wouldn't you what? Well, that Bonnie woman can't be telling us the truth. She might. Then again, she mightn't. If you want my advice, I do what the cross-eyed tomcat did. What's that? Watch both rat holes. Divide your men between the Kansas State and the Union. Yeah, well, that must be her now. Am I very late? No. Hello, Dr. Tybreek. Howdy. Will you sit down? No, thanks. I went over the whole plan with Tarp Anders. He's going to hit the Union Bank at 5 after 9 in the morning. The Union? Why would he do that? He knows that I know he cased the Union Bank. So he figures you think it'll be the Kansas State. Well, I... I had a tough ride to get this information. If you don't believe me, just say so. Look, I'm sorry. I've done all I can for you, Mr. Earp. You're stupid. Go ahead, let Tarp make a fool of you. Good night. Hold on. Put this on your husband's leg. Keep the bandage moist with it. All right, Doc. Thanks. You ain't stupid, but you're sure stubborn. Oh? No. I think she's telling the truth. Well, she can't be, Doc. I checked both banks this morning, and the Kansas State Bank has got twice as much cash on hand as the Union Bank. Almost 30,000. And Clem Parker isn't going to go for 15 when he can try for 30. You can watch both rat holes, can't you? No, I can't. I've only got six deputies, and if I divide them, it'll give... And there's too much of an edge. You just worry about doctrine and let me handle the bank robbers. It's going to be the Kansas State Bank. There. 
Clem, are you all right? Oh, funny. You certainly took long enough. How did your leg feel, honey? Oh, uh, it hurts a little. Doc Fabrique came by. Scraped the bone or something, gave me some laudanum. How'd you make out? Fine, with Tarp. He's going to take the union. Erp won't believe me. He'll be watching the other bank. That won't do any good, Bonnie. Anders will make a clean getaway. Well, what can we do about it? I thought I liked Erp. He thinks I'm a no good and a liar. I don't care what happens to him. I do. Why? Doc Fabrique. He and Erp are close pals. I owe Doc plenty. He says he's going to pull me through this. Clem, there was never any doubt. Yeah. I needed a surgeon to clean the bone and get the medicine down to where it'd work. Otherwise... Here, take this paper and pencil and draw me a layout of those two banks. Maybe we can save that idiot in spite of himself. Mike! Mike, there might be a little trouble here at the Kansas State Bank, so stay indoors. If you got any customers, tell them to do the same. Pass the word, will you? Now remember, Mr. Gale, let them have all the money. Don't try and stop them. We'll get them as they come out. Is your safe open? Yes, but don't you think after they close it, maybe they'll be satisfied with the teller's money. No, they'll just make you open it. Let's work it the way we planned it, huh? Well, all right. Everything's working out fine. Herb's around the corner. Why don't we get at it? Not until Jonesy gets Herb. It's almost time now. to worry about him. Return the money, Jack. Mrs. Parker? Don't you want to take that gun of yours and beat some sense into my fool head? No, Mr. Herb. I'm just thankful it turned out as it did. Who's that, Tarp Andrews? Yeah. Who got him? You? No. I think it was your husband. No. Dr. Fabrique gave strict orders he wasn't to get out of bed. Well, now he can stay in bed and get well. You tell him for me, I'll be dropping by to speak my thanks to both of you. We'd like that. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous.
courageous and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be told. Long may his story be told.